in uh, short yardage. Uh, yesterday we had a tremendous scrimmage. The guys were very spirited. Uh, we put in goal line today. Uh, we're going to scrimmage it on Saturday, preseason game number two. Uh, we're on full pass back to back. This is probably the toughest part of camp these last couple of days. Our guys did a tremendous job of responding. Uh, the leadership on the team has been phenomenal. I thought Ali Gay today had a tremendous day in pass rush. Uh, yesterday, those two young running backs really showed out. Uh, both of them had excellent days. Uh, they're going to be tremendous players for us. Our run game is coming along, along with uh, our RPOs and our play actions. Uh, I think our team is developing very well. Uh, we've got a couple of guys banged up, uh, nicked up as part of camp. Uh, we're going to continue forward tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, we'll put in four minutes. Friday, we're going to have a walkthrough. Saturday, we have preseason game number two. And then uh, next week, school starts uh, to give our guys a break. And then we're going to start game planning uh, next week for UCLA. Any questions? Yeah, I've got two. Texas game and the Miami game were so important to getting off to a good start in 2019. How important does that make the UCLA game? You know, I, we look at, I look at it the same way. I haven't talked to the team about it. It's, it's on the road. Uh, unknown team. You know, we're an unknown team. We, we know what we have. But we got to go out and prove it. we got to be hungry. And, uh, you know, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be at their house. Uh, they have some great athletes on their football team. It's the first time we've gone out to Los Angeles with our football team, so it's going to have to be a business trip. Uh, there's going to be some some obstacles that we have to overcome during the game. Obviously, it's our first game together. They have, they have played the game. Uh, it's the first time we play with our quarterback. We have to take care of the football, but I think we'll be ready. Our guys are going to be fired up, ready to go. Uh, I had a question. I think you told T-Bob and Jacob that you're doing short yardage and goal line. Yeah. Is this part of camp – the most difficult part because you're kind of in the middle. Yes. Far from the yeah. I guess how do, how do you approach that when you really yeah. want to get the most physical part of your yeah. practices in and you know your guys are probably the most resistant? This yeah, you know, here's what I told them. The work that we do yesterday and today, we're going to use during the season. And uh, I went back and I showed them the Auburn game in the Plains on September 15th that we played at 2.30. Showed them back uh, the game that we played in the Swamp. That we played at 3.30, that 2.30 that time. To play, the game we played at Georgia at 2.30 where it was hot and where it was tough. And then, and the, that team was uh, ready. For, they were prepared for that. And uh, that's what we're doing now. We're preparing for those days. We know those days are going to come. They're probably going to come the first game. And uh, the only way to prepare for that is to do it and to get out in the elements. Uh, it was challenging today, just like it was yesterday. Guys are banged up. They're bruised up. But, you know, i got to give, like, Austin Declan's is going every – Every down, Liam's going every down. Uh, Neil Farrell's going every down. Uh, Ali Gay's back going every down. Uh, Andre Anthony's going every down. Our linebackers are going every down. So when you have your best players for the most part going every down, it helps the football team. Mike. Hey, Coach. Mike Scarborough with TigerBank.com. Two-part question. With all the rain that you guys have had in the afternoon, yeah. typical showers, and the fact that you're not in school right now, is there a discussion about moving practices to the morning? Yeah. Uh, that's a little late. you got school next week. Second of all, St. Jones, what do you expect to get out of yeah. him? Being from him, uh, obviously a true freshman that's raw coming out of St. James, but do you, do you think he's going to give you more than a lot of people think behind him like Gates? You know, uh, Savion's made tremendous uh, progress this last week. It's funny you mentioned him. You know, the first week it was a little bit different for him, but you know what? We, you know, in, in the, the off-season condition and drills, he's been phenomenal. And uh, he's really coming along trying to learn his position and play it. He, he's so conscientious he wants to play it right. You know what? Uh, in 2018, it rained a bunch, and we were practicing in the afternoon. So I said, okay, we're going to change the practice to the morning. And it rained in the morning. So that was the last time I did that. <laughs> but we've been getting a lot of work outside. Thank God we got the indoor facility. You know, we got the guys checking for lightning and stuff like that. Like today we practice some inside, some outside. Or tomorrow we're going to go outside. I think a cumulative effect over the next two weeks, we're going to have enough uh, practice in the elements to be ready. Hey, Coach. Um... Did you get a timeline or have you gotten a timeline on Miles Brennan in terms of when could he come back and, and how important? I, I'm sure you'd like 
experience yeah. quarterbacks yeah. the one. It's the third or fourth game of the year. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't want to say nothing prematurely. Uh, you know, he's just getting over the pain. He's just getting able to where he's coming back around. Obviously, it was emotional for him. I think they're going to try to put the pads on him as soon as he can. Maybe start throwing the ball. I don't know a month or something. But you know, I'm not. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not going to rush him. I want. I want him to be ready. Uh, I was told he meant to come back sometime this season, uh, as early as you know, mid-season, as late as open date, Alabama, something around there. But the, 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 none of that's definite now. Hey, Ed, just to get some of the, uh, the housekeeping out of the way, uh, with any update on the status of Stingley or Davis Price, some of those banged up. Yeah, yeah, right? yes. Uh, David, you know, uh, ty, 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 uh, ran yesterday, man. Had some good plays. Came in yesterday, had some good plays, had some good runs. Uh, kind of tweaked it again today. It's something that we got to monitor out the whole year. Uh, Derek's doing fine. I think that uh, – I don't. I think we're going to lay off of him next week. I think uh, the week after he should be fine, and uh, I think that he's going to be a hundred percent there. And we don't. We won't have to worry about reaggravating it. Hey, coach. Um, this is Glenn Weiss of Belshi Country. Um, just wondering if you could give us an update just on how the two tight ends are looking out there. Um, obviously, Cole Taylor and Jack Bash. Just, just what, what are I guess kind of the strides that they've been making throughout this fall? Really good. Well, both of them are really good. Uh, and Pat Mashburn, and he's in the mix too. Uh, obviously, Cole's our starting tight end. He's doing very well. You know, he's, he's the physicality is is something he's getting used to, but he he's really working on it. Uh, you know, with all the athletes we have on on the field, that uh, you know, he's probably not the number one target in in the passing game, and obviously so. You know, we got a lot of guys that we can throw the ball to. Not that he can't catch it. Uh, Jack is a little bit out of position at the tight end position when you put him online because, you know, he's just not as, as physical as you want him to be. It's not his fault. He's a great player, has a, has a tremendous uh, catch radius, goes get every ball you want him to, is going to develop there. And Pat Mashburn is going to be fine. I think we're going to be we're going to be fine there. We're going to be great, not yet, but we have a chance to be really good. Hey, Ed, a uh, question about the overtime now. You'll have to go – the rules are now you have to go for two so much more often. I've yeah. experienced the overtime. When, the, when you have to go for two more often like that, do you implement certain plays designed for those situations, or do you just take whatever you like to do in short yardage maybe, mm. or do you design specific things for two-point plays? And everything? Well, you know what, Wilson, we'll, we'll step ahead because we had that uh, that nice overtime game against uh, A&M that year, and we, had, we ran out of plays. I remember Innsmaker going, does anybody have another two-point play? I think it was seven overtime. So since then, I've implemented a two-point play period on Mondays, and uh, we have a roller that's a two-point play. So we, we, I think we're ahead of the game seriously, and uh, we should be. Uh, and, and we're always looking for new two-point plays. We may look at the NFL. We may look at college, some that work. That's an ongoing thing. But, you know, obviously you don't want to run the same one every time, so you want to have new ones ready every week. I think we're a little ahead of the curve on that because of that overtime game. Coach Chesa Boucher with WVLA here in Baton Rouge. What have you seen from Keyshawn Boutte, and are there any veteran wide receivers who have kind of stood out so far this year? Yeah, I see leadership from Keyshawn. I see a, a, a very good connection with Max and Garrett. And I think that uh, him and John Trey and, and Jare are leading this, this team. Not only the wide receivers, the team. You know, and I, I told the team the other day, it's very important. In order, in, order, in order for us to be a championship team, that our best players practice the best. And there's no question I can tell you Keyshawn is practicing the best. And he's being the leader right out there. Uh, he's into it. He comes talk to me a lot, of, a, a, lot, a lot of things. He's coaching the young guys. All those young guys are coming along. Uh, every one of them has their day. Uh, this, is a, this is one of the best group of skilled freshmen that we've had here. And I think all of them are going to get a chance to prove themselves. Yeah, they got pork chops from then. I'm worried about eating too many. <laughs> That's the only thing I worry about. No, but be sitting up. seriously, Mike, is, you know, we, ha we have some injuries, especially on the offensive line. I got to keep them healthy. 
And, uh, you know, you, you have to push. You, you, have, you get at a point right now, you have to push. And you have to be out in the elements, and we have to scrimmage. Uh, but we got to get our guys game ready also. And uh, it's a fine line. And, and you're at that point of camp where, you know, as a coach, you, you want to be hard and you want to push them, but you want to be smart and pull off at the right time. So I think it's a fine line. I do believe that tomorrow we're going to be only in helmets. Uh, today, you know, we hit two days in a row. I'm going to give them a break tomorrow. I'm going to give them a break Friday. I'm going to see how healthy we are on Saturday to see how the number of plays that we can go and uh, maybe limit the, the the type of scrimmages that may cause injuries to offensive line, like goal line, short yardage, you know, and limit those guys. Maybe just have teach periods then and just adjust to the injuries that we have. You and I talked before about the, your ability to adapt, and we talked last week about rotating linebackers. Is that part of the game now where yeah. because you're playing two, like the old school mentality is, hey, we got to get, you know, Get rid of the old school mentality and play what works. Yeah, we have to. There's no question, especially with the spread offenses. I mean, these guys are going to hurry up. You guys, you got, we got to keep these guys fresh. And it's good to have four starters. I mean, there should be no difference when any one of those guys go in the game. It just makes us stronger. Yeah, what's the latest with the safety spot? I guess have you figured out kind of a, a main two there? What's the latest? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Jay Ward has just come back from, from an entry. So, uh, you know, he, he's been steady there. You know, Derek and those guys, Sage, Sage has been working nickel. He's been working safety. Ty's been, Ty's been doing very well there. We think we're going to be fine there. We think we're going to be strong there with the addition of Jay Ward there. So we think we're in good shape. Coach, you talked about the defensive line. Other than Chase and Hines, who else is hurt on the offensive line? You know, there's, there's some nicks here and there. You know, uh, Anthony got a, just a little, a little lower Extremity injury yesterday is probably going to be out for about a week, you know. But that, we think that all our offensive linemen are going to be back come game time. That those guys that have had some nicks and some bruises, uh, I don't see anyone out for a length of time that, that may not be ready uh, for UCLA. Maybe one only, but we're going to find that out in a couple of weeks. And a question about uh, Greg McMahon. Obviously, he's been one of the like, mainstays on this staff for the last few years. What is it about someone who is a former safety that makes him such an effective special teams coach? Is it just you know the way he sees things? Like, you know, what do you like so much about him? And that? It's thoroughness, fundamentally sound. He teaches fundamentals and he backs up everything I say. Core values. Uh, he has a lot of. Uh, he's helped me build this program. He's one of the pillars on my staff. Greg has recruited every kicker or punter that we have. All I've done is say yeah. Coach, you like him? We yeah, have, but he's been right on everyone. Uh, he recruited Avery Hackers as a walk-on. He recruited Cole. He, he recruited Cade. He recruited our, our punters. Uh, he handles the special teams like a head coach. Uh, and here, here at three o'clock in the morning, leaves at ten o'clock at night. A great man. Our players love him. I sit in every one of his meetings. Uh, he's very sound. He's a good man. Thank you, coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers. Too many pork chops, baby.